Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best musical adaptations of books. How the astonishing, astonishing. Number 10, The Wiz. L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz enchanted people of all ages, with both a fantastical setting and allusions to American politics. The Wiz made the brilliant decision of leaning into the latter by infusing the story with elements of black culture while staying true to the major plot points. Excuse me, did, did you just say, Out of Pearl, Wicked Witch, and the Enchanted Slippers? Girl, you hit the trifecta. Welcome to the Emerald City, y'all. In 1975, Broadway musicals were not as diverse as they could have been, and The Wiz helped open the doors for others with black-led casts. The humor and music took on new life in the modified version, introducing new audiences to Broadway and established audiences to a new way of looking at things. Then click your Number 9, Oliver. I hope I shall have the honor of your intimate acquaintance. We are very glad to see you, Oliver. Very, aren't we, my dears? Charles Dickens is no stranger to having his work adapted to the stage and screen. Even his unfinished Mystery of Edwin Drood got its time in the spotlight. The most famous example is Oliver, a reworking of Oliver Twist. <laughs> Exactly, my boy. I suppose a laundry would be a very nice thing indeed. But, um, now a line of business pays a little better, don't it, boys? The original tells the story of a boy who escapes from a workhouse and falls into petty crime. The adaptation is more lighthearted. The edited plot and bright tune stack helped it become the perfect show for families to enjoy. The choice to revamp Fagin from a classic villain to a comedic role was a stroke of genius. As it cut through the harmful stereotypes found in the novel, the result was a beloved musical that's remained a staple in theater since its London premiere in 1960. Please, sir, I want some more. <laughs> Number 8. How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying Satire can be tricky, especially on the musical stage, but How to Succeed was a triumph. The source material parodied self-help books that claim to help readers become successful with minimal work. Before applying for a job, make sure the company is a large one. This is essential. It should be at least large enough so that nobody quite knows exactly what the other fellow is doing. The musical takes a slightly different spin on the concept by crafting a narrative about a man trying to rise from window washer to chairman of the board. The sarcasm was still present and biting, and that, combined, made for the perfect adult comedy. If I can't take my coffee break, something within me dies. Lies down at something! Frank Lesser's score was nothing short of magnificent, adding just the right amount of heart to the story without diluting the humor. It's been a hit since it debuted, with over 2,000 performances over its three Broadway productions, and it cuts as sharply now as it did in 1961. Oh, aren't you proud to be in that fraternity? The Brotherhood of Number 7, Matilda. Even if a little you could do a There's hope and whimsy in Roald Dahl's original tale, but also noticeable darkness. The theatrical version did a marvelous job of emphasizing the positive aspects of the story, while keeping just the right amount of darkness, especially in the character of Miss Trunchbull. There is no mystery to mastering, the art of classroom mistressing is discipline, discipline, discipline! This retelling about a girl who uses telekinesis to turn her life around also highlighted some of the character's more ridiculous actions, making it appear as though it was happening through the eyes of a child. The musical had just as much heart as the novel, which appealed to fans of Doll and those who simply wanted to reconnect with their own childhoods. It gave the final product an authentic feel, appealing to viewers and critics alike. Number 6, The Color Purple. 
A story this powerful was made to be told across several different forms of media. Alice Walker's work had been the source of both praise and controversy due to its dark yet impactful subject matter. Time to go. I'll be back next week. Now you eat something for me here. I'm gonna get you out of here. My I said time to go. It follows the life of a young woman as she grows up facing personal trials and tribulations while navigating 20th century America. The 2005 showing got off to a slightly rocky start, with criticisms being made about important moments being cut out. Fight back. Why you still alive? You showed him, girl. However, they gave it another shot a decade later and this time, they hit it out of the park. The slimmed-down plot and star-studded cast gave it the boost it needed, helping it become one of the defining musicals of the 2010s. Oh, baby, oh, Number 5. Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 and this is all your program. You are at the opera. If a 1,200-page Russian novel can be adapted into a modern Broadway presentation, then anything can. Leo Tolstoy probably isn't the first name to come to mind when thinking of theater, yet the dense War and Peace, consisting of a fictional narrative, history and philosophy, was completely transformed for the stage. It focused primarily on just 70 pages of the overall work, centered around a couple's torrid affair and one man's existential dread. The contemporary soundtrack breathed even more life into the interpretation. It was a daring way of presenting the daunting text, but their riskiness ultimately paid off. It became an instant standout amongst fans of theater. They even scored a dozen Tony nominations, eventually taking home two. May be counted a number as many as drops of wine, a vodka that stay in my glass. <laughs> number four, Hamilton, an American musical. Who knew hip hop and theatricality would mesh so well? The ten dollar founded father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder by being a lot smarter by being the self starter. The idea for Lin Manuel Miranda's iconic show Hamilton came to him while on vacation. He had picked up a biography about the founding father, and within a few chapters, he knew he had his next hit on his hands. How do you write like you're running out of time? Write day and night like you're running out of time. Everything you find like you're running out of time. Much like the source material, he took the viewers throughout the major moments in Hamilton's life, both good and bad. He took it a step further by modernizing the sound and incorporating newer genres. So he knows what to do in a trench, ingenuity, the fluid in French, I mean. Hamilton. So you're gonna have to use him eventually. What's he gonna do on the bench, I mean? Hamilton. But what has more resilience or matches my practical, tactical brilliance? Hamilton. You want to fight for your land back? Hamilton. I need my right hand man back. The centuries old history and contemporary presentation served as a perfect symbol of American culture. Both the memoir and the musical were highly praised as a result, with the former returning to the bestseller list and the latter sweeping the 70th Tony Awards. Number 3. Wicked The Wiz isn't the only noteworthy musical interpretation of Baum series. Stephen Schwartz offered his retelling of the work, this time through the eyes of the Wicked Witch of the West herself. Based on Gregory Maguire's novel, it offered a more sympathetic view of the witch, revealing the twisted events that led to her being perceived as wicked. It offered a fresh perspective on what was once a one-dimensional character. The grandiose power ballads and the genuine friendship Alphaba and Galinda formed made the final result feel special. It was a huge commercial success, selling out for years and cementing Idina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth as legends. Because I knew you, I have been changed for the Number 2. Les Miserables You know your place in the sky You hold your course and your aim And each in your season returns and returns And is always the same Victor Hugo's classic is filled with compelling characters and complex themes that keep all five volumes gripping from beginning to end. 
The theatrical version got off to a rough start, with some scholars even condemning the creators for daring to adapt such an important literary work into a dramatic opera. However, the public vehemently disagreed. The rousing performances and themes of redemption and love stuck with them. The softer, emotional songs and juxtaposition to the heart-swelling ensemble-led numbers kept them engaged. Their support helped transform Les Miserables from an underappreciated gem to a beloved show with multiple revivals and over 6,000 performances in its first run alone. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Jekyll and Hyde. Stevenson's gothic piece became a popular favorite. Hyde is here to stay, no matter what you may pretend, and I'll flourish long after you're gone. Mame. The eccentric novel stage adaptation made a star of Angela Lansbury. Just turn the yard for somebody, for an affection for the Phantom of the Opera. The dark romance came across perfectly in front of an audience. The of the opera is there. Fiddler on the Roof. Drawn from short stories, it was the first Broadway musical to run 3,000 performances. continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cabaret Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome. Fremde. If you're searching for sheer historical importance, then you won't have to look much further than this. Christopher Isherwood's Goodbye to Berlin was based on his own experiences in the city and how he noticed its citizens doing anything to enjoy their remaining pleasures as Hitler rose to power. The eventual adaptation Cabaret leaned into this idea by having the primary setting, a sketchy nightclub, represent the fading Weimar Republic. We have no troubles here! Here! Life is beautiful! The girls are beautiful! Even the orchestra is beautiful! Audiences were at the edge of their seats as they watched the Kit Kat Club and Germany itself crumble before them. The music exemplified the hedonistic escapism, with performances that were eerie yet spellbinding. It's become one of the defining musicals of the 20th century, with several revivals beneath its belt since its 1966 debut. Have any of your favorite novels been adapted into musicals? Let us know in the comments below. My destiny calls and I go. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.